Oh, hey you. What up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. Happy holidays. This is the look that I prepared for you guys today using my favorite drugstore product of 2023. So in this video, I'm going to be going every single one of them. I have several in each of the categories. I'm going to apply to my face to create this very festive, very easygoing look. Actually, I can't even believe how amazing it looks on me. It looks like Everything that I slapped onto my face has been super expensive and very luxurious, but it's not it's at a drugstore price So this is the video for you if you want to save some coin, but score some great products So without further ado, let's get into this video Remember to subscribe if you aren't already notification bell and now let's hit it best drugstore makeup of 2023 Let's go so I've got my little basket full. It's almost like a Sephora basket, but it's not. It's from Ikea. And I've got it filled with all of my favorite drugstore products for the year. So I'm going to start in um, a bit of a different sequence. I'm going to start with this Pixi on the glow bronze tinted moisture stick. This is one of my favorite, I guess you can call it a cream blush or a cream bronzer. This specific shade, it's kind of in between a blush and a bronzer. And the reason why I'm starting with this one is because I'm gonna use it as sort of my primer. I'm gonna apply it directly onto my clean skin, kind of heavily across the cheeks actually. I definitely want to give my skin that little bit of luminosity and glow. And this product, I will say, it doubles or triples as a primer, as a moisturizer, and also as your color for your cheeks. You can blend this out with your fingers, you can blend this out with a brush, whatever you see fit, but it has been viral for a reason this whole year. I keep on adding more colors. There's blush shades, there's bronze shades. I hear there's more shades and more products in this category coming 2024. So that should be very exciting. So a little bit of moisture, a little bit of that plumpness and just a hint of color. Obviously you can apply this with a brush as well. This is not meant to be a super pigmented type of product. It's supposed to look very natural and very healthy and glowy. Next, I'm gonna use my favorite liquid contour from the drugstore for 2023 and it is from Milani. It is this guy right here, the Liquid Contour Conceal and Perfect Shade One. I also like to use shade two, but shade one is a little bit more on the natural side. So if you prefer a very light contour, this one will be a good shade for you if you're in my skin range. So I'm kind of just dotting this product all over. What I like about this one is that it's really easy to blend. It's really no fuss, super intuitive. The color is great. It blends really easily, really quickly. It doesn't stain your skin like some products tend to. And you see how it just adds that little bit of color, but without being overwhelming. All right, the contour on the jawline part, I like to blend down because I don't want to look like I have a beard. And obviously, I am underpainting. I'm doing the underpainting technique in this video. So I'm applying all of my shaping products, my highlighting products underneath my foundation. I feel like that's also been a trend or a technique that's been very popular in 2023. I just think overall it makes your look appear more professional. All right, a product that I've been liking kind of in the primer category is actually this uh, Maybelline Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. This is supposed to be comparable to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter Glow product. And I would say it is. It's probably the closest product or the closest dupe to that CT product that I've been able to find. I really like how glowy, how natural it looks. I really like the shade. The shade here that I'm using is 1.5 light medium. I like to add it to the high points of my face, also to the center for that little bit of glow, chin, jawline, kind of in between the areas that I just contoured. And I'm gonna use the same brush and buff that in. My skin's on the good side right now. I do have a couple of breakouts, but nothing too crazy, nothing too serious. I'm okay with the state of affairs of my skin. And just adding that little bit is already making it look even better. So now I'm going to add my actual primer primer. I know this is out of order, but this primer is the best from the drugstore. Sadly, I think it has been discontinued and this is not a primer for 2023. It's a primer that I've been using for a few years now. I want to say this launched during the pandemic. I want to say it was like in 2020 or maybe 2021. And it is just such an incredible 
formula. It has this moussey type of finish. If you have really good skin, this can also double as your skin base, as your foundation, or I guess a skin tint. It is very light coverage, but it does offer a little bit of color. You could probably still find it on Amazon, and if so, I will definitely link it. But this was a primer that I had been raving for a while, ever since I discovered it, and before I discovered the Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder. This has a very similar texture and finish. It just blurs the imperfections. It gives a little bit of that perfecting veil to the skin, which I really, really love. And I'm specifically applying it to my pore zones, to the areas where I have some bumps, and I'm just smoothing that out. You can tell that it even softens in that spot that I had here. This is just an incredible, incredible primer. When I learned that it was getting discontinued, I stocked up on shade 30 and shade 20. Right now I'm using shade 20, and shade 30 is what I use for the summertime. So I still have these, but like I said, it is just the best. Okay, so now for my foundation. I already did my best foundations of 2023 video. So if you watch that one, you already know that my two favorite drugstore foundations have both been from L'Oreal and it's from the True Match line, the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum with 1% hyaluronic acid and also the reformulated True Match Super Blendable Foundation. The shade that I wear is W6.5. This used to be a W6 in the old True Match foundation, but but they have since reformulated using six different pigments for an even truer match, so now I'm a 6.5. And in the True Match Nude, I am shade 4.5 medium. Both of these are great. This one, I believe, is like $13. This one's a little bit more expensive at $20. I guess, let me go for the more expensive one. And I think I've used this one a lot throughout the year in many videos, so I'm gonna give this one a little bit more love. Both of them are great though. Not crazy about the dropper. I just feel like this can be messy, especially if you're wearing a white shirt. <laughs> oh my God. Look, I'm actually scared doing this. The dropper is not the best idea ever. You know what? It's also me. I could have probably dropped it on the back of my hand, but I just don't want to do that. I'm going to use my It Cosmetics Complexion Perfection brush. A dupe for this is the e.l.f. brush. This is also a really good shade match for me. It just gets rid of my redness and discoloration. It matches my neck and the coverage is just so nice. It's very, very natural. It has a little bit of luminosity, but the product in the bottle does look a pinch metallic. It does not come off that way. As you can see, I'm not looking like a tin man. This blends really easily, really seamlessly. Just a super lovely foundation. And because I've already applied my base, I don't need to contour or bronze up kind of just applying the product to wherever I need it, wherever I have a little bit more discoloration, dark spots, redness, and then kind of blending it into the perimeter of my face. So easy, so lightweight, it doesn't even feel like I have makeup on. And I already have a couple of layers strategically placed, but a couple of layers nonetheless. All right, another blush that I've been loving from the drugstore is this uh, Heart Candy Face Blush Off. This is really cool. It actually looks like a lip gloss, but it's not. It's a blush. And my favorite shade is this one here. Hold on, let me get this cat hair off of the wand. The shade is called Be Real, and I kind of like to use this as an illuminator. It definitely has a, a bit of a nudie undertone, like a slightly peachy nudie undertone. So it can double as a blush or as your highlighter. I really, really like this one. And there's tons of shades in this particular line, but look how pretty and how natural that blends out. Just like a hint of luminosity and a hint of color. So, so stunning. It's just dainty. That's what I would describe this as. It's just dainty, it's just pretty, it's really cute. There's tons of colors, like I said, but this one's my favorite one. I don't know, it just adds that little bit of something special to the face, and I like it a lot. All right, in the concealer category, I gotta give it to the Physician's Formula Butter Glow Concealer. This one is incredible. One of my favorite concealers of late 2022, I'm still gonna count it in 2023, and probably up there with my Tarte Shape Tape. This is so, so excellent, super pigmented, Super forgiving on the skin. Just a great formula. This one does come with this little sponge applicator. Clearly, I've never used it, and I don't intend to. That's a gimmick, it's a waste. I still prefer to use my brushes, but just the product itself is so, so flexible, so moldable, so nicely pigmented, like, come on. The shade that I am using here is medium to tan, though. So the shade range might be a pinch questionable, but the formula itself, is really very nice. So I'm hoping that when I do these videos, 
part of my critique for the brand is actually towards the brand itself. Perhaps maybe they can see my criticism or they can see that I love a product so much and it needs more shades. And I kind of remember liking this product earlier in the year and just hearing this rhetoric in the comments that the shade range is not good enough, the product itself is really nice and more people would like to utilize it. So I'm just gonna jump on that and reiterate that again. Great formula, needs better shades. Physicians formula, talking to you. I was saying that, I just um, also kinda wanna be a little bit more positive, you know? Some brands just don't know. Some brands just need a little bit more of a push, you know? They need to kinda be educated through their consumers and through the people who try out their products. And they need to be told and they also need to listen, which is fine. But personally, I'm not in the business of like canceling brands for making mistakes, you know? I think mistakes are okay. We all make mistakes. I think it's super important to learn from them. At least this is how I've been raised. At least this is what I've always thought. And so this is what I'm continuing to subscribe to, you know? Yeah, this concealer, freaking fire. Needs more shades. More people need to try this. It's so inexpensive. It's just great. Sadly though, I still have not found that one perfect or at least close to perfect under eye setting powder from the drugstore. I still have not found that one powder for me. So I keep on reaching for either my Laura Mercier or the Milk Makeup or the Patrick Star one size or Dominique Cosmetics, you know? So right now I'm just gonna use the Milk Makeup one because I don't have a loose setting powder from the drugstore that I love. And no, I don't really like the Milani one. I don't really like the Maybelline one, they're just not that great for me. So I'm just gonna quickly set my top areas of interest, my lids, my under eye, in between the brows, around the nose, and around the mouth. Because guess what? I do have a favorite pressed powder from the drugstore, and I'm almost out of it. That's how good it is. I'm talking about the Essence 16 Hour Cover and Last Powder Foundation. Shade Macadamia is what I use. Shade Macadamia is actually really hard to find. I'm gonna try to find it and link it for you. This is how little I have left, but this one is incredible. Another dupe to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush, Airbrush Flawless Finish. Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I used to be able to say that really fast, but then once I found this powder, I stopped using CT. I totally switched over, and now I forgot how to say it. <laughs> or at least my tongue doesn't twist that way anymore. This powder is micro fine. It doesn't look or feel like powder. You could use it to snatch, you can use it to set. It doesn't emphasize your texture or pores. It has a little bit of color, but it's just the perfect percentage of pigment to perfecting capabilities, you know? Because some super pigmented powders, although they color correct and they definitely get rid of any color issues or skin issues any color any skin color issues that one may have but they're not so friendly to the texture you know what i'm trying to say this one is not that kind of powder this powder is forgiving on everything and notice i'm only sort of powdering the center of the face i'm not really going into the perimeter into those areas that i contoured i'm just gonna lightly dust whatever's remaining on the brush over those areas but for the most part i want to keep the glow i want to keep the minimal contour, you know? Excellent, excellent powder. Believe this is only five or six bucks. You can still get it at Ulta, but like I said, this particular shade, number 10, Macadamia, is really hard to find. This year, I also discovered one of my favorite blushes from the drugstore, or one of my favorite blushes, period. And it is a big blush, once again, from none other than Essence. This is an incredible product, one of my favorite products for the year. Such a reliable, such a beautiful, such a perfecting type of product. One of my favorite shades, is pretty peach and of course I crushed it which also crushed my soul but I'm gonna use it today because it is just so good I like to use a really big brush like this one from Laura Mercier not a drugstore brand but because my cheeks are giant I just like to tap my brush into the product which by the way I also like this one because the product is giant and it fits my giant brush and then I kind of just slap the product around. What I like about this one is that it has a little bit of luminosity, but not in the way to enhance your problematic skin texture if you have any. It in fact does the opposite. It gives the it gives the optical illusion that your skin is better than what it is. And also if you notice, the product doesn't sit on top of your skin. It just melts with everything else that you have going on. Now I'm going to show you a close up cuz I feel like it's really hard to tell with the big camera. Let me show you here. Do you see how it just reflects almost like a highlighter, but it's just so dainty and it does it in the most delicate way. You see that? Kind of obsessed. 
kind of obsessed. The colors are also very, very stunning. There are many more shades than what I have here. I think there's about nine or 10 shades altogether. These are just my favorites. Pretty Peach, Bold Heart, Cool Coral, and Rosy Rosewood. <laughs> I like those names too. Speaking of essence, I also discovered this Pure Nude Highlighter that I've been loving, but apparently this is not a new product. I thought it was. I remember I reviewed it in one of my testing new makeup videos, and a lot of people called me out saying, Mariam, you're off your game. This is not a new product that's been around for many, many years. Now I know, rest assured, but it is one of my personal favorites for the year. I also really enjoyed the Catrice More Than Glow Highlighter. Probably not from 2023 either, but super, super blinding. Just kind of show you that swatch. Definitely reminds me of that old school Jaclyn Hill champagne pop. This one is a lot softer. This is a baked formula. So it has that soft focus finish. I love them both, honestly, and I've been using them more than my high-end highlighters, if I'm honest. They're just great. I don't want to use it today though, because I really like the subtle glow that I have going from all the blushes and all the layers that I have. So I think I'm going to skip highlighter for today's look, but these are my two favorites from the drugstore currently. And by the way, Catrice and Essence are sister brands. And I will say I've been liking a lot of their products this year, like a lot. Catrice, Essence, I want a partnership in 2024. I'm just saying, I love your products. I'm over here, I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, let's move on to brows. The brow category is always a finicky one for me, but I will say that I really like NYX's brow products. I always have loved their brow glue. This is not a new product. This has been around for a while now. I am obsessed with their Lift and Snatch brow pen that I use pretty much every day, this one. I'll probably use it today again. But this year I actually rediscovered the Pixie Brow Duo, which has been a fave many years ago, and then somehow I just forgot about it. It's just the way that it is, especially when you test a lot of products for a living. But then I was in LA, I went to the Pixie store, and then I realized they have this shade Soft Black, which I never actually tried. I always used to use the Deep Brown. And once I tried it, I remembered how much I loved it back then, back in like 2017. 2018. So I went back to using it. I've been talking a lot about brows lately because I have this theory that powdery brow pencils, like this one from Pixie, are better for brows that are already thicker or darker or on the denser side. Like if your brow hairs are coarse like mine, if the width of the hairs is thicker than fine, you will probably love a powdery brow pencil. If, however, you have sparse brow hairs or if the hairs themselves are thin or fine, if you have light colored eyebrows, you will probably love a waxy brow pencil because it'll also be able to hold it in place. And chances are, brow gels are not your favorite product of all for brows if you have finer, lighter, or sparser brows. So I feel like this is something that not a lot of people talk about but I'm gonna talk about it. I used to always talk crap about those waxy brow pencils, and then I just realized they're not for me. They were not actually made for my brow hairs, but there is an audience for it, just not me. So anyway, this Pixie brow pencil is my jam. It is my cup of tea. It's so easy. It doesn't look like product in my brows whatsoever. And then the brow gel itself is also very nice. It's not crunchy, but it is able to glue all my brow hairs together. So I will say this is a new rediscovered fave though not a new product for the year. There you go, super, super cute, easy, and it works for me. But I am gonna take my NYX Lift and Snatch and add a couple of brow hair strokes. Boom, skin is looking really, really fresh. I feel like this whole look is coming together very nicely. So now let's move on to some color cosmetics. Let's move on to some eyeshadows, some eyeshadow crayons, and lip products. Okay, one of my favorite new discoveries for eyeshadows, specifically eyeshadow crayon markers, are these from Hard Candy. These are better than Bobbi Brown, than Laura Mercier, than the Rare Beauty, than the Fenty, than all of the crayon shadows you have ever tried. These are insanely pigmented, insanely silky, so easy to use, so easy to blend out. My favorite shade, and I think it's a shade that everyone should own, every single makeup artist. If you do makeup on other people, you need this shade Bubbly. It is the perfect champagne shade that you can pop in the inner corner or onto the brow bone, just to like define this section here. You can apply it all over the lid. This is just so perfect. This is a perfect product and it's so easy to use. It actually almost feels like a marker instead of a crayon. You could blend it out with your finger or with a brush. It's just really that effortless. I'm gonna use a little synthetic brush just to buff that out slightly while keeping the straight edge under the brow. It is 
perfection. And obviously there's many more shades. They have a great black which you can use for your smoky eyes or for a base, for a colorful shadow. Way better in my opinion than the NYX Jumbo eye pencils. I love those, but this is on another level of good. These feel so high end and they're like available at Walmart for, I don't know, $8, maybe less. Truly, truly, truly one of my favorite products this year. So these are the two shades that I've been using a lot. I also have been using the black. Today, I think I wanna go for something pinch more colorful. So I'm gonna use the pink, ink metallic shade, but I'm not gonna use it just yet. I'm actually gonna save it. I wanna show you my favorite eyeshadow palettes from the drugstore for 2023. These are from 2023 and I love them so much. I use them so much. I actually ended up working with this brand to promote these even further. It was like one of my happiest moments for the year. I'm talking about the CoverGirl Clean Color Eyeshadow Quads. There are so many gorgeous shades like the Shimmering Taupe for every day. The classic smoky for a classic smoky eye. My favorite palette was this blue one called Midnight Sky. It has just the most gorgeous golden shades and also some really nice blues. I love this mellow mauve. Actually, a palette that I'm looking for that I forgot to pack into my little basket over here and it is their cranberry shade that I wanted to use today. So I guess I won't be using it. I don't know where it is. I guess the mellow mauve is what it's gonna be. So I'm gonna do a little holiday inspo, if you will. I'm gonna grab this palette pencil liner and I'm gonna dip into, this looks like a slightly smoky, slightly dusty mauve shade. I'm gonna create this outer wing. I'm gonna blend that out and then I'm gonna take that back, kinda a little bit above the crease, somewhat along the line of my eye socket. Do you see how pigmented that is? How soft and easy it is to blend? I'm gonna map out this little shape here like that. I'm gonna take a little blending brush and just Erase some of that excess, which will also help to blend it a little bit and make it softer and easier like that. Next, I'm gonna take a bigger fluffy brush and dip into this lilac shade. I'm gonna apply that right between the brow bone highlight and the shape that I just created. Just a little bit, just for like a blushing moment. So what I like about this eyeshadow palette specifically is that it performs like a high-end eyeshadow palette. This feels like Pat McGrath. This feels like Natasha Denona. It's so easy to use. There's no fallout, there's plenty of pigment, really just so, so dreamy. And I haven't actually used this particular quad before. And like I said, I was meaning to go for the cranberry one. Somehow I didn't pack it in. But even still, this is so intuitive and it's so easy to use. The colors are working so well together. It's just, it's just right. And I believe these are like $11 each. Okay, so I like the base. It is looking very, very dainty. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that lilac shade and just add that to my lower lash line. But subtly, just for like a little bit of a wash of color. This color combo will be so nice if you have green eyes. It looks great with brown eyes as well. But if you have green eyes, ooh, this will be perfection on you. So nice. So I'm just gonna use my finger, dip it into this kind of burgundy shimmery shade. I'm gonna add this on a diagonal all over the movable lid, kind of like that. Oh, I love it. That is so pretty, oh my God. That is even prettier than I thought it was gonna be. So now I'm gonna reach back for that pink ink from Hard Candy. I'm gonna highlight the very inner portion of my movable lid. See what I'm doing? Kind of like that, just adding a little bit of light and then more heavily, I'm gonna line the top lash line, but only towards the center, like that. Starting for my liquid liner, the one that I've been loving the most this year is the Milani Stay Put Infinite Liner. This one is a dippy kind. It feels very, very inky. It does have slightly problematic wand in the sense that it's not very precise, but if you are good with lining your lids, then that shouldn't be a problem. However, I do realize that not everyone is great at this, but I do wanna show you that if you can master using this liner, it will become one of your favorites because it absolutely does not move, it does not smudge. It is super black and super inky, just very reliable if you know how to use it. It almost feels like a melted gel liner. So I'm gonna keep my lining to a minimum. I'm just gonna keep like a tiny little cat eye and just a thinnest little line, very close to the lashes, just a little bit. By the way, ever since I grew out my lashes using that very expensive non-drugstore serum, it has been increasingly more difficult for me to line my lids because the liner always gets in my lashes. Almost done here. Two favorite mascaras from the drugstore this year. One is the Flower Beauty Dream Warrior Volumizing Mascara. And number two is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean, Lash, CoverGirl Lash Blast. 
Clean Topia Mascara. Okay, this one is a clean formula. This one is probably clean too, but I'm gonna use one on each eye. I'm gonna curl my lashes first, even though I no longer need to, because they are longer. I'm gonna use CoverGirl on this eye. This one's been a favorite and just so trusty because it's so quick and easy. It has that fluffy type of formula, so it makes your lashes look fuller, bigger, longer, and very, very quickly. Just like a couple of strokes, and you already see my lashes. Also, it still leaves them looking very feathery and not too clumpy, so it's just the perfect combination of clean, volumizing, lengthening, darkening, just a great everyday mascara. And I even love this before I grew out my lashes, so you know this is a good formula. You can keep layering it if you want, if you prefer a more clumpy type of lash look, but I like it just like this. This one's a little bit different. I feel like this one gives a more defined look to the lashes, so it separates them while also giving some length and volume. So perhaps not as fluffy and soft looking as the other one, but honestly from far away, can you even tell? Both look amazing. I'm gonna continue using both, and I would recommend both. All right, so now for the lips. Got just a few products remaining. For the lip liner, I will always recommend the NYX Pencil and Soft Brown. This one I've been using forever. I also really like the Milani pencils. But something new that I tried this year was the Catrice Maxi Lip Plumping Lip Liner. So I guess I'll use this one today since it's newer. And by the way, if you didn't know, every time you see Maxi Lip mentioned in a product, that is the lip plumping trademark formulation that a lot of brands use. And it comes from an ingredient that is the derivative of Szechuan pepper. But with this particular lip liner, you don't feel any sort of burn. You feel a little bit of a misty or <laughs> minty sort of tingle, but you don't actually feel the burn. So perhaps the Maxi Lip product that they're using is of a lesser percentage than some of the other brands, say Too Faced or the New Polite Society from the founders of Too Faced. But I feel like this one still does a little something, at least for me, or maybe it's just me overlining, I don't know. But anyway, I really like this color. This is in the shade What A Doll, and I really like it. But one of my recent favorite lip products that I just, just, just discovered and reviewed on my YouTube Shorts, you probably already know. It is this Essence 8 Hour Matte Liquid Lipstick. This is $6 a pop. Super, super inexpensive, really nice, very wearable colors. There's eight colors altogether. I have five here, maybe I have more, I don't know. Yep, in fact, I actually have all of them. So yeah, if you're looking for a really nice liquid lipstick that's not too drying, that feels comfortable on the lips, I would highly recommend these. If you wanna see swatches, I do have a video, a shorts video where I'm swatching all of these, so do check it out. So I am gonna go for something sultry because it is the holidays after all. I'm gonna go for a deeper shade, this one called Dark Berry. And it doesn't matter if my lip liner is on the peachy side. It's fine because this is pigmented. The only thing with deeper shades, they definitely require two coats. But for five or six bucks, who really cares who's complaining? Ooh, you can probably see that the first coat is matte, but it's just a little bit too sheer. So I'm gonna wait for this one to dry. Actually gonna use a brush for the second coat just to make it extra precise. Okay, that took way longer than it needed to take. I was just trying to be really extra precise. So now that I have the lip line, I'm gonna fill in the center and wait for it to dry. And this one sets very, very quickly. And now I'm thinking I'm gonna add just a little bit of highlighter while I wait. I'm gonna go for the Essence Pure Nude. This is the softer highlighter. Uh, just a little bit right here, a little bit on the forehead. And here's my final look. Holiday ready using the best drugstore products of 2023. What do we think? I'll tell you what I think. I'm ready for the holidays and I'm ready to go out and get some tacos before the holidays because this look needs to be seen. I feel like this is such an easy, such an understated, such a fun but sophisticated little look to put together, especially for the holiday season, especially for the winter time. You can definitely wear this for Christmas, even for New Year's, even for Valentine's Day. I like the slight berry vibes of the undertones of the eyeshadow and the lipstick. And honestly, the thing that I like the most about my look today is how professional it looks. It looks like it was completed using high-end luxury makeup. It was really easy to put together. Everything that I mentioned today is my favorite for a reason because it performs like incredible high-end luxury makeup but at a drugstore price because it is, in fact, drugstore products. I'm gonna wish you guys an amazing holiday season. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you are looking forward to the next one, which will actually be the best products of 2023. I will see you in the next one. Peace out, I'm out. More videos over here. Deuces! And happy holidays.